Hello, I welcome you to this program of entrepreneurship and sustainable development. The aim is to make sure that we promote entrepreneurship and sustainable development across Africa. My name is Nathan from Fenlina Management Consultants. The topic for today, we are going to see how the war in Ukraine has greatly destroyed the world's ecosystem with no possibility of immediate recovery and how it contributes to the destruction of entrepreneurship and sustainable development. The source of uh, the information I'm providing today is from Dr. Mid Angelica relating to economy and ecology, which was presented on the 1st of August, 2022. All leaders, wherever you are, must listen and take necessary action to stop resolving conflicts using the gun. All leaders should be encouraged to listen to this video very carefully. It has a lot of information. We need a ceasefire now. War is a climate killer. When elephants fight, other creatures suffer. Russia's war with Ukraine has pushed the climate crisis off the agenda. But we need a ceasefire and global demilitarization for a 1.5 degree Celsius world. If you enjoy the content of this video, please remember to subscribe and give the video a like and make your suggestions in the comment section. This will enable us to continue providing you with more valuable information. The well-known effects of climate change are floods, severe weather fluctuations, unpredictable seasonal variations, food deficit, disease, water crisis, hurricanes, and many more. War brings death and destruction, not least to the environment and climate. Russia's invasion of Ukraine offers a depressing reminder of that fact and further increases the military sector's already enormous global carbon dioxide footprint. In addition, the eastern Ukrainian cities where fighting is taking place are home of fossil fuel infrastructure such as chemical factories, oil refineries, and coal mines, the bombing of which produces a cocktail of toxic substances that has devastating environmental impacts. Efforts to arm the two sides, moreover, are consuming materials and resources that could otherwise go towards tackling the climate crisis. Based on the global carbon dioxide budget, humanity has less than eight years to ensure it still hits the 1.5 degree warming target. To do so, we need to urgently implement reforms in all areas to bring about systemic change as the IPCC report from early April puts it. This is a report that was explaining about climate change and its effects and how problems can be resolved. The military sector barely gets a mention in this almost 3,000 page document. However, with the world military coming up just six times, you might thus conclude that the sector is of little relevance to the climate emergency. The reality is rather different. Using military hardware results in huge quantities of emissions. In the war in Ukraine, 36 session attacks on fossil fuel infrastructure were recorded in the first five weeks alone, leading to prolonged fires that released sweet particulates, methane and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, while oil infrastructure has been ablaze on the Russian side too. The oil fields that were set on fire in 1991 during the Second Gulf War contributed 2% of global emissions for that year. We need to stop this war between Russia and Ukraine and all other wars immediately. Our nature is degrading very fast. While greenhouse emissions are of the most significant importance of war, the quality emitted depends on the duration of the conflict and on what tanks, trucks, and planes are used. 
Another is the contamination of ecosystems that sequester carbon dioxide. Staff from Ukraine's Environment Inspectorate are currently collecting water and soil samples in the areas around shelled industrial facilities. There should be, by now, a report about their findings, and this will be discussed next time. The ramifications for the climate can be catastrophic in scale. According to a study by the organization Oil Change International, the Iraq war was responsible for 141 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions between its outbreak in 2003 and the report's publication in 2008. By way of comparison, some 21 EU member states emitted less carbon dioxide equivalent in 2019, with only six states topping that figure. Globally, the military sector is estimated to generate around 6% of all carbon dioxide emissions. This figure needs to go down to zero if you have a war-free globe. And this requires, first, the will of our leadership. Post-war rebuilding also produces significant emissions. Estimates suggest that reconstruction in Syria will lead to 22 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions. The rebuilding in Ukraine, too, will consume vast amounts of resources. At the World Economic Forum in Davos, President Volodymyr Zelensky stated that at least five billion US dollars of reconstruction funding was needed per month. Every effort should thus be made to achieve an immediate ceasefire, both for the sake of the climate and to avoid further human suffering. Emissions from armed forces and military equipment cause considerable environmental harm around the globe. And yet, bowing to pressure from the US, military carbon dioxide emissions were excluded from the climate treaties such as the Kyoto Protocol of 1997 and the Paris Agreement of 2015. As a result, they do not form part of their building agreements and are neither surveyed systematically nor published transparently. The consequence lack of data means we can only make vague estimates as to the military sector's impact on global heating. According to a study by Neta Crawford, co-director of the Cost of War Project at Brown University, the US Defense Ministry alone is a bigger contributor to the climate crisis than individual countries such as Sweden and Portugal. This makes it the largest institutional source of greenhouse gases in the world. Globally, the military sector is estimated to generate around 6% of all the carbon dioxide emissions. Germany's role with this new 100 billion fund for the military, Germany seems willing to countenance further far reaching climate impacts. This military investment will tie up financial and intellectual resources, making it highly unlikely that the 1.5 degree target can be achieved that countries wish to better protect themselves against potential Russian aggression is understandable, but the public debate around this issue needs to balance an uncertain increase in security against a reduction in our ability to fight climate change. The German military was already responsible for around 4.5 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions in 2019 significantly more than the 2.5 million tons contributed by civilian aviation within Germany. This is now set to increase. Just one of the F-35 jets ordered from Lockheed Martin emits about 28 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per tank of fuel. For comparison, the average annual emission footprint in Germany is 11.2 tons per head. The income from the sale of fossil fuels 
provides ongoing funding for Russia's war of aggression. From 24th February to 24th April 2022, the country's forcing fuel exports via sea routes and pipelines had an estimated value of 58 billion euros. The European Union accounts for 70% of that total, or 35 billion euros, while Germany is the largest single importer of Russian fossil fuels at 8.3 billion euros worth. Our fossil fuel dependency is thus a factor in both the climate crisis and the invasion of Ukraine. And yet, representatives of politics and business are using the war as an excuse to delay the necessary social ecological transformation. While corporations still stuck in the fossil fuel age, such as BP, Shell, and Saudi Aramco are posting record profits, the climate crisis continues apace. More arms means more damage to the climate, not greater security. The likes of Rain Metal and NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg may champion climate neutral warfare using eco friendly tanks and hydrogen fuel, but this is surely not the answer. The Western armed forces, security experts, and arms manufacturers are well aware of the significance of climate change as evidenced by the numerous security strategies, policy statements, and sustainability reports published on the subject in recent years. These outline ways to adapt to a changing climate while ensuring the doctrines of growth and hegemony are nonetheless defended against any and all resistance. We need ceasefire now. Together with the European Union and NATO, Germany is preparing for scenarios such as war, environmental disaster, and influxes of refugees in order to ensure its foreign policy will still be fit for purpose and its security interests protected. A cynical approach given that the worst affected, those who, as some see it, Germany needs to protect from will be those who have contributed least to global warming. And one that seems even more absurd when you consider that the environmental destruction brought about by military investment and resource-related conflicts will help to further hit the climate. At the same time, steps are being taken to reduce dependency on fossil fuels. Nonetheless, a Green's Peace report published last year demonstrates that the majority of all European Union military missions have links to the protection of oil and gas imports. This dangerous relationship between fossil fuels and military missions and war needs to end. More arms means more damage to the climate, not greater security. Rising defense budgets among NATO states will simply convince Russia and China to increase military investments in time. At 2.1 trillion, global arms spending has already reached record levels. In conclusion, as the war in Ukraine goes on, the biggest challenge of the 21st century, the climate crisis, has slipped down the agenda. We mustn't forget, though, that efforts to tackle that crisis can only succeed if all countries, including Russia, work together. The immediate demand is for a ceasefire, followed by measures to build trust, such as international disarmament treaties. Moreover, Russia will need outside help if it is sufficient to a climate-friendly energy industry. What's required is a fundamental social ecological transformation with policy making dictated by the needs of all. That may seem inconceivable at present, but what's the alternative?
unchecked global warming will be catastrophic for the planet's entire population. Personal imports, the war in Ukraine. I wish to thank the African delegation that took an effort in ending the war in Ukraine. They managed to talk to Ukraine president and Russian president. It is very clear that the Ukrainian leader is not ready to end this conflict. The next step should be to meet NATO and get their views. African leaders should further involve NATO leaders in the discussion. Mediation does not mean that the mediator must be a superpower. More damage must be avoided at all costs, because if not ended, the whole world will be severely affected. This video is brought to you by Fenlina Management Consultants, the main sponsors of entrepreneurship and sustainable development. Based on the content, it is obvious that entrepreneurship is almost impossible in a climate plagued by wars because the effects of a negative climate change totally erode the contribution by entrepreneurs to achieve sustainable development goals as desired by the SDG Agenda 2030 and the Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. We need to stop wars immediately and resist any such temptations in future. Thank you very much for your time. The next video will be about the steps so far taken to deal with conflicts. It must not be through the barrel of the gun. Let's embark on a new era of conflict resolution. Please remember to subscribe, give the video a like, and make your suggestions in the comment section. This will enable us to continue providing more valuable information. God bless you.